Hey guys, how's it going? This right here is the OnePlus 9. This is the Vivo X60 Pro. Two phones that are going head to head for the best phone at rupees 50,000 tagline. Now, which one comes out as the winner? And which one of these two phones should you be interested in and should you be buying and would make more sense for you as a consumer, as a user? Lots of questions, lots of answers. This is one from Guiding Tech and you're watching my full-on comparison of the OnePlus sign with the Vivo X60 Pro. Let's get started. All right, so let's start off with the design here. And I mean, these are both some of the most flaunty and flashy designs that I've seen on smartphones for a while now. But if I really had to pick one of the designs here, I think I'll go with the X60 Pro here. Not just because it's slim and lightweight, but I really like the overall finish here. I mean, obviously I won't deny the fact that the slim form factor here does really appeal to me. It's quite ergonomic and it's quite lightweight. So that feels good. Secondly, the X60 Pro here has a frosted matte finish here, which is quite fingerprint resistant. The OnePlus 9 on the other hand has a glossy finish which although really makes this color pop also attracts a lot of fingerprints. Now when it comes to build quality, the Vivo X60 Pro comes with Gorilla Glass 6 protection on front and back and comes with an aluminum frame. OnePlus 9 on the other hand has Gorilla Glass 5 on front, Gorilla Glass 5 on back but comes with a plastic frame. Now, I am not going to get into this debate of aluminum versus plastic. To me, personally, I just say, I mean, as long as it feels premium in hand and it feels sturdy, I am okay with it. I genuinely do not care a lot about plastic or aluminum. I am not one of those guys. Now, while we're on the topic of design, one thing I want to point out is that alert slider on the OnePlus 9, which still remains one of my favorite features. Like seriously, considering how much Android brands love to copy everything that Apple does, why hasn't this alert slider featured carried forward to other brands as well? Like seriously. In fact, I would argue that OnePlus's implementation is better than that of Apple's. So yeah, essentially both of them are great designs and you can go with either one of them. But for what it's worth, I mean, the Vivo X60 Pro just feels more pro. Now moving on to the front side of both the phones here and there is a very stark difference here. I mean, they're both Full HD panels, they're both Super AMOLEDs, they're both 120Hz refresh rates. That all is fine. The Vivo X60 Pro has a curved panel while the OnePlus 9 has a flat display. That said, if you still give me an option, I think I'll still go with OnePlus 9's flat display. I just somehow like the symmetry and the overall usability of a flat display more as compared to the curved panel. Like, don't get me wrong, the curved panel here is great. Like I just said, no issues whatsoever. It's just a personal call here to go with a flat panel. And that's basically it. They're both great panels. You can't go wrong with either one of them when you talk about the display. It's all a personal call whether you want flat displays or you want curved displays. That's all. So yeah, they're both made for amazing content consumption, whether it's Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, or even watching great YouTube videos like Guiding Tech. So subscribe, please. All right, so now let's talk about the cameras. Hasselblad versus Carl Zeiss. Well, I mean, Vivo has always had a edge in terms of smartphone photography. Though with Hasselblad partnership, OnePlus has made some big, big changes. Does it manage to beat its BBK brother? Well, let's see. So in terms of the specifications, the OnePlus 9 has a 48 megapixel primary sensor, a 50 megapixel ultra wide sensor, and a two megapixel depth sensor, along with a 16 megapixel selfie shooter. The Vivo X60 Pro, on the other hand, comes with a 48 megapixel main sensor, a 13 megapixel telephoto lens, plus a 13 megapixel ultra wide sensor, and finally a 32 megapixel wide selfie camera. Now, just based on those spec sheet, I would just like to highlight and give credit to Vivo for not adding another two megapixel depth or macro sensor just to make it look like a quad or a penta camera setup. They have given us three lenses on the rear side and all three of them are, well, useful, not pointless. So yeah, credit where it's due. Anyway, as for camera samples, when it comes to daylight shots, Vivo likes to shoot slightly warmer and saturated colors. The OnePlus 9 is more on the neutral side, which is good. Now, Vivo has a better HDR as well as slight better details, but ultra wide is where OnePlus wins easily. The color profile remains the same when switching modes, and there's no fish eye due to the free warm lens. 
Now I have to say this that some folks might prefer Vivo shorts which is fine the better looking and mostly social media ready. As for human subjects Vivo does soften up the skin tones but overall the images are still more detailed and HDR also works better. Coming to selfies Vivo absolutely owns the selfie game. Like it offers better details, better edge detection, more crisp shots and can handle HDR as well. Unfortunately, that HDR only works in normal mode and not in the portrait mode, while the OnePlus 9 has HDR in the portrait mode as well. So, there's that. Okay, now let's talk about low light camera performance and okay, this is one thing that's going to have divided opinions. For what it's worth, like if you talk about low light cameras in today's aspect and how people view low light camera photography the Vivo X60 Pro is a clear winner that's it if you ask me personally i think i would slide with the OnePlus 9 see here's what i mean so as you can see the Vivo X60 Pro absolutely crushes the OnePlus 9 however the problem with that is that nowadays night mode is just filling the frame with as much light as possible now i know a ton of you might like it which is great But personally I think I prefer OnePlus's take here simply cause the shots still do have an element of night time. Like Vivo makes the shots look as if they were taken in broad daylight or late evening at worst. It just doesn't look like night to me. Now moving along we have videos and once again the Vivo X60 Pro just absolutely crushes the OnePlus line. I mean Here I don't even have anything to say in favor of OnePlus 9 the X60 Pro just absolutely crushes its competition whether it's the rear camera or the selfie camera. Here let's just take a look. So recording 1080p footage on the OnePlus 9 on my left hand and the Vivo X60 Pro which is on my right side. Now one thing to note here is that the super stable mode is turned on while the Vivo X60 Pro has the ultra steady mode turned on. The one difference that you'll notice here is that uh, the OnePlus 9 is capped at 30 fps. while the Vivo X60 Pro is capped at 60 fps i shouldn't say capped because that's the default resolution which it records in default frame rate it records it and obviously it's far more smoother and in terms of video quality also i mean okay forget video quality just look at the stabilization on offer here panning the camera around everything so crisp so smooth i'm i'm walking very fastly right now but i don't think you can notice anything on the Vivo X60 Pro right now because it's just that that good and in terms of the video quality uh once again yeah Vivo is far better than what OnePlus is doing also if you notice this very specific frame right here you'll notice that obviously Vivo's footage is a little more cropped in keep in mind that OnePlus does not have any sort of OIS so OnePlus already uses EIS which means that the frame on OnePlus's camera is already cropped in so that so the fact that Vivo which does have OIS and a gimbal system is also cropping in further just goes to prove that whenever a brand uh, whenever a brand tells you that okay we have gimbal technology on all of that stuff it's not just hardware they still use some level of EIS to achieve those results also just a sec here yeah the hdr seems to be doing like the oneplus 9 seems to be doing a better job in terms of hdr so yeah that's good at least it has some points to score in the video department so we're recording 1080p 30 fps footage from the oneplus 9 which is on my left and the vivo x60 pro which is on my right side and already you can see that the vivo has better colors has a sharper footage and yeah just looks far far better than what OnePlus 9 is doing also Vivo's camera is not as cropped in it's a wide lens OnePlus's sensor is very cropped in it's very zoomed in actually and yeah it's it's not that good i mean if i have to just match it i'll have to push the OnePlus 9 a little far off to just match the level of distance or the zooming in that's happening i mean this is quite noticeable so yeah this is the, right now the frame that you're seeing is both hands with the phones obviously both the phones being located at the same distance so yeah this is a big factor and overall footage also i think vivo wins this one easy peasy i mean hands down there is no competition vivo wins this very easily all right so now let's talk about performance so the OnePlus 9 it comes with the flagship Snapdragon 888 processor the vivo X60 Pro comes with the flagship Snapdragon 870 processor Yeah apparently we have now reached a time where one company produces multiple flagship processors 
I thought Flagship was supposed to be the top of the line. Weird times, but that's just the way Qualcomm is working. But anyway, yes, the 870 is essentially a slightly overclocked Snapdragon 865. It's fine. Everyone knows that. So yeah, most folks would argue that the OnePlus 9 is better when it comes to pure hardware or specifications. And to some extent, I agree with that. Like, if you see the benchmarks, yes, the OnePlus 9 beats the Vivo X60 Pro, but that's benchmarks. What about day-to-day -day usage? Well, for starters, in day-to-day -day usage, you won't even notice any difference. Like literally zero difference. You won't even get to see even one frame drop or one hiccup or anything. Both the phones run super smooth, no issues whatsoever. Games also run at the highest settings on both the phones. No lags, no hiccups, no frame drops, no issues whatsoever. And this is when I'm talking about the first one hour. After playing about one hour or so, the OnePlus 9 starts to heat and heats up quite a lot. And that's no surprise. The Snapdragon 888 is notorious for heating up wildly. I mean, the only phone that I can think of that has managed to keep that processor cool is the ROG Phone 5. Our review of which will be coming soon, so make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. But basically what I'm saying that every other phone with a Snapdragon 888 chipset has heated up. They have all struggled with overheating issues. The Vivo X60 Pro, on the other hand, with the 870 chipset, offers gaming performance similar to the OnePlus 9 without any heating issues. So that's great. And credit to the fact that Vivo is also having a slimmer chassis here and still manages to have better thermal performance than the OnePlus 9. Now, another thing that I would like to highlight is that at 50,000, the OnePlus 9 comes with 8 GB of RAM while the Vivo X60 Pro comes with 12 GB of RAM plus an additional 4 GB of virtual RAM. Now, what is that virtual RAM? Well, I would just call it clever marketing. It's not exactly proper RAM, but it's not, it's not not RAM either. It's kind of a gray area. I mean, it does function like a RAM, but basically what I'll just say is that that so-called 4 GB virtual RAM is not actual space. It just increases the efficiency of the memory management on your Vivo X60 Pro. I know that kind of sounds technical because it is, so here's my thing. I have a lot to say about that virtual RAM. If you guys are interested in knowing how virtual RAM actually performs, what virtual RAM really is, is it just clever marketing or is it a proper technical term? How is it different from all the memory management technologies that we've had on Android? Make sure to comment down below and I would love to make a technical briefing sort of a video on what this virtual RAM is. Only if you guys are interested. Other than that, even if we leave the virtual RAM part aside, at the same price, Vivo already has 4 GB of extra RAM compared to what the OnePlus 9 offers. So yeah, that is anyway an added advantage if you are into multitasking. Okay, now next up, we have the software bit. And okay, I just want to say a couple of things. First up, Vivo, thank you. Like seriously, thank you. Funtouch OS 11 based on stock Android is the best thing that you could have done to anything that is software related to Vivo. I mean, it still has a lot of, and a lot of features, I mean, but yeah, that stock Android look is very, very good. So kudos to Vivo for that. Secondly, there's still some work that needs to be put in here, but for what it's worth, it's fine. Finally, if I had to pick, I think I would still pick Oxygen OS. I mean, yes, Vivo has done a great job of, the softer skin here looks great, but at the end of the day, Oxygen OS is just far more refined, far more fluid, feels better optimized. Yeah, I just like Oxygen OS more than what Vivo offers here. Now, that's not to say that both the skins here are perfect. I mean, I faced issues on both the devices. The OnePlus 9 has some heating issues like I talked about, but it's not always down to benchmarking or gaming for more hours. Just normal usage also and this phone gets an error that the device is heating up when it's not exactly always heating. OnePlus has acknowledged it and they have said that they'll be rolling a software update out for it. So that's good. As for Vivo, well, the problem is a little different. Nobody has highlighted it, at least to my knowledge, but Vivo just completely breaks third party launchers. Like my choice of Android launcher is Nova launcher. And when I install Nova on this, gestures don't work. Uh, multitasking doesn't work. Nova launcher four stops and the system just keeps resorting to its quick step, quick, some quick launch or whatever that is. Yeah, it's a mess. It's not that good. I mean, to be fair, the stock Android launcher is very good, no doubt. I just prefer third party launcher. So 
yeah if vivo could work on that that would be great so yeah for what it's worth i think i would still say that the oneplus 9 has a better softer part with oxygen os as compared to vivo's one touch os All right so now let's talk about the battery life. Now the OnePlus 9 comes with a 4500 mAh battery with 65 watt fast charging. The Vivo X60 Pro comes with a 4200 mAh battery with 33 watt fast charging. Now this is one area where OnePlus easily easily wins. Not only does this phone last longer, it also juices up at almost double the pace of Vivo. And to be very frank with you, I genuinely do not even care about 0 to 100%. that is something that i anyway leave for overnight charging that that is fine i genuinely do not care about it what i do care about is the top up charge the fact that i can just charge my oneplus 9 for 10 to 15 minutes and that battery can last almost an entire day is amazing so yeah that factor comes in really handy now it's not to say that the vivo x60 pro has a bad battery life or the 33 watt charging is slow i mean it's still very very fast It's just that the OnePlus 9 has me spoiled for choice. But now as for the current prices, the OnePlus 9 comes in two variants. You can get the 8 plus 128 GB variant for 50,000 or the 12 plus 256 GB variant for 55,000. The 12 plus 256 GB variant of the Vivo X60 Pro is the only variant available and that comes at just 50,000. So let's talk about the 12 plus 256 GB variant only because that's the common counterpart. For a difference of 5,000 I feel the Vivo X60 Pro offers far more features than the OnePlus 9. I mean, let's be honest. The only difference here ideally would be well, a supposedly last year refreshed flagship processor and well, half the charging speed, which in itself is still quite fast. Don't get me wrong. 33 watt charging is still quite fast. and for that compromises you still so called compromises you still get a lot a lot of features and yeah if you are in the market for a new smartphone and you have 50000 in your pocket i think it will be better spent on the vivo x60 pro as compared to the oneplus 9 well that was the comparison of the oneplus 9 with the vivo x60 pro which phone will you guys be buying let us know in the comments below also just so you know There's another new phone in the town for the claim of the best phone at fifty thousand, which is the Samsung Galaxy S twenty FE five G. Now, would you guys like to see a comparison of that phone with either of these or both of these? Well, if you are interested, make sure to let us know about that as well in the comments below, and you never know, we might just make a video on that. Till then, this is one from Gaining Tech, and I'll see you in the next one.